Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Copenhagen solar cooker. These can be made basically for free out of things that you either have around your house or you can obtain everything that you need for five dollars. Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers and Solar Cooking on the Go. Highly portable solar cooking that's great for camping and for your backyard. And these are highly effective because they're very adjustable. You can adjust them to whether the sun is coming at a low angle, if it's directly overhead, or if it's evening. And um, very compact and portable. Once you put these together, they take up a 14 inch square that's only about half an inch thick. So could easily go in a backpack. And no problem for an RV. So let's get started. Okay, things you're going to need for your project. You're going to need two poster boards. Those two poster boards are going to be your solar shields. My poster boards are 28 inches long. Those, those shields are 14 by 14, so I can simply cut these in half and then cut off 14 inches, and that gives me my four sides. So two sheets of poster board, an 8 by 8 piece of cardboard, We need something to measure with, something to mark with as we're measuring, and then once we finish it all, we're going to need to label those parts, and so I've found that a, um, uh, a marker works best for that. Something to cut with, either a box cutter or scissors, something to uh, glue our uh, foil on with. We also need heavy duty aluminum foil or I'm actually going to be trying to make this with mylar. Uh, as you can see mylar is a highly reflective surface and it should get fewer wrinkles than the foil and where I got mylar was an emergency blanket got it in the uh, sporting goods supply at Walmart cost me three bucks but I'm doing that because as you saw I already have one of these made out of foil I want to find out is the mylar more effective. We are also going to need something to glue that uh, onto the poster board with. I also like to have a craft stick to spread the glue around. Then once I had that done, something I did was I went on and used some strapping tape, I mean packing tape, around the edges because I figure if you're folding this and you're carrying this, that's the part that's going to get the most banged around, so, sorry, I used uh, some packing tape. Uh, we talked about foil. We're also going to need eight little nails to poke the holes that are going to, our shoelace is going to go through. I also used an ice pick then to expand that hole. You then need either a, like an athletic shoelace or string, and then clothespins or some sort of fasteners to hold it all together. So once you get all your stuff, oh, and something to protect your work surface. So get your materials together and I'll meet you back here. Excess. If you're doing this with aluminum foil, you're going to spread your glue out first then I recommend go on and start your foil. Uh, it may be easier to go and cut them and do 14 inches. Kind of experiment with that. On the other one, um, I think I went on and cut them at 14 inches and then you have to do an extra section of foil at the bottom. But uh, essentially now it's a matter of cutting and gluing. Okay, my mylar covered 
um, cardboard and poster boards have been drying. And while they did wrinkle up a little bit as they were drying, I still think they're shinier than the, um, than the uh, foil, so we'll have to see about that. But what I'm going to do now is cut these. Okay, this step is not required, but I actually plan to use these a number of times and so to kind of protect the edges what I'm going to do is use some packing tape to tape the edges down so that this doesn't pull loose. Okay so you can see it's kind of reinforced on the back makes it a little stronger on front. I'm going to repeat that process on all four panels here and on the small one as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're getting ready to poke the holes that are going to hold this thing together. So, this is your opportunity to find your weakest link. Find the parts, if there's a corner that wasn't covered completely or there's a place that's really wrinkled badly, uh, choose the worst corner and you're going to put those four corners together in the middle. I then am going to take my 8 by 8 piece at an angle here. So the corners of this 8 by 8 are coming out on the four sides of the poster boards. Okay? Kind of draw a line across here so that it's a little easier if you want to. Okay, this is how we're going to hold these together. Actually, I'm going to see if I can measure this and make it a little bit more precise. I'm going to put the edge of the ruler here and come down to two inches. First thing I'm going to do is number these squares. So I'll call this one one, two, three, and four. And I'll also put a one, two, three, and four. But because I've already made a couple of these out of foil, and this one's out of mylar, I'm going to put an M next to these so that I'll be certain that when I'm putting these together I know that when I'm comparing them to see which one works the best that I'm getting the mylar. And this is going to be really important. While I did kind of measure, this is in no way scientific or, or exact. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, this board out. And so you can see I've got the little holes here. I'm going to take my ice pick, go through there, and you can tell that makes the hole quite a bit bigger. And I'm going to do that on, once again, all four panels and on the board here. The reason I'm doing that is because if you're using a string, you may not need one that's quite as large. But because I'm probably going to be using a shoelace, this now is going to make that a much better fit. It's not just falling out, but it certainly is easier to get that through. Okay, I now am ready to put this together. So I'll line this up so that one is right here. And I'm going to always come up through the cardboard and then through the panel. And I'm going to leave probably about, I will say about a foot. Then I'll go down. Tight 
tie it like you would a shoe. Flip it over. And we now can simply start shaping it like petals on a flower. Okay, we can, you can see that can be easily adjustable. Make this side a little bit higher, the other side a little bit lower. Okay. Overall impressions, having made two of these out of aluminum foil and now this one out of the Mylar emergency blanket, I've got to say that the Mylar is actually a lot easier to work with. Um, I'm not sure how much we can kind of compare the two here. This is uh, aluminum foil. Um, I don't know which one's actually going to end up being shinier. At first, I thought this one wouldn't have as many wrinkles, but it got more wrinkles at the end. Um, but this one was easier to work with. It was more forgiving as I was trying to put it on the, on the poster board. So, um, eventually we're going to test them out and see if there's a difference, which, if one of them gets hotter than the other. So, keep watching and see how she cooks. Okay, one other thing I want to say about the Copenhagen solar cookers, and that is, so far as commercially produced solar cookers, these are the most affordable. Um, current price in summer of 2017, I think, was around $40. So, once I've played around with the ones that I've made, experimented with those, if they're working fairly well, I definitely may invest in one of the commercially made ones simply because mine do have a lot of wrinkles. The commercially made ones don't. It's just a flat sh sheet that's very, very shiny. Uh, I think it's some sort of a mylar that's been pressed onto uh, a flexible surface. So um, you might want to look into buying one if you've made one and found that it works well, but you want something that's going to work a little bit better. But like I said, I'm thinking I may invest in one. So if you want to see how well they really work, down the road, I'll probably have the answer. Thanks for watching. Two Tired Teachers.